called the Mare, and they, uh, the idea is to open this case, and the main question is, should we take into account the different morphologies of the plant anemone when we derive the abundance for this case? Another way of uh, thinking about this is, when are deriving the tools we use for, for abundance, if you take into account the morphology, do you get different tools and different ionization correction factors if in these tools you take into account the morphology? I can tell you, I can display that you do get different results and the set of questions you get for uh, right abundance is different if you take into account the if you only consider the spherical and if you also consider the elliptical and the polar morphology. Uh, this is a work uh, still under development that I'm doing there at uh, the Observatorio Palongo in Rio de Janeiro. In collaboration with Roger Dalassan and Chris, uh, Chris uh, Morissette, Mike Barlow and Barbara Ercolet. Yeah, so why do we care about uh, about this planet identity? It finds that we are interested in these kind of things because if you take the models of planet anatomy, they are you know, they are very useful to prove their cell composition. They provide uh, insights on the intersections of uh, this uh, stop style of this mass. Um, if you forget about uh, carbon and nitrogen, what? Well, if you forget about this, these all these elements, they take on the other alpha elements, you say that uh, the planet are never kind the progenitor bundles. So when you get the, the final bundle from planet anatomy, what you are getting is uh, the abundance of the ISM when the progenitors are born. And also if you compare the abundance you get from the planet anatomy with those you get from the age of you can we really can constrain very well the evolution of different environments. And here I show a number of uh, uh, review stocks in which only Platinum Network can consider here and the galaxies and the uh, clouds. Here Platinum Network and uh, H2 visions beyond the I mean, other uh, galaxies and the local group. And here all these kind of uh, results are discussed in addition of the uh, cavities of the different methods we have to the right parts. So let's think about how we derive these abundance. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's the opposite way. Okay. So maybe we have two ways of the right abundance of the right The first one is the one we call the empirical one, that is the ionization correction factor method, that very much depends on the coverage, the lambda coverage you have. So, if you have a limited uh, lambda coverage, we only see some of the ions, so we need to compare to four the others we cannot see. And this is what you do with this ICF method. I mean, despite a number of some problems we could discuss here about this, uh, in general, this is the only tool we have in hand to obtain a balance. And of course, if you take, if instead of having only uh, optical data, you can also add the UV and infrared spectra, we improve enormously in the results we have for, for the other bodies. And the most common recipes we have uh, using the empirical method is this one, given by the Council of the Bar in 94, and I'm for it this way, the whole rest of the stuff. All the stuff, it's not the same problem. An important thing here is using these, uh, these recipes is that they were uh, derived using a number of planetary network observations, I mean, in addition of 1D photonization models. Uh, then, uh, this way. Um, the other method we have is uh, the photonization model photon uh, shipping. What you do in this case is that you use these empirical bundles and they vary these values till to get uh, um, to, to have a match between the observation and the spectrum and also the initial line paths. But you need a number of input parameters here for this model. But anyway, 
using these, you can get a total of the final analysis of for the object. I mean, there are a number of discussions about this, and the main thing to keep it, you know, to keep in mind is that sometimes you do have more than one family of results that would match your data. And in this case, of course, I have more than one abundance, set of abundance. So it is not really good. The other thing is that sometimes we are not able to really find a nice uh, model for a certain, um, certain number of constraints for the same star and also for the distribution of the DNF. But the main point here is that this method is tremendously time consuming. So in general, we are not using this because we need you know, months and months to, in addition to the observations, you know, the too long time to get the balance they need. So now going to the problem of uh, you know the shapes versus the main way of getting a balance and that. So we already know that there is a strong correlation between the morphology and the nitrogen abundance of uh, the planet and everything. And for the different morphologies, of course, and in the galaxy and as well as uh, the matter of crops. And this is a review of a number of papers I made in this review. Uh, so if you take that thing that it was obtained, you know, under the consideration of spherical symmetry, and also you consider that at most or about only 20% of the planet are uh, round. Um, yes. Uh, so you Uh, 
the optical plus infrared, and they let their own the adding the UV to the game. Ah, first thing. No matter which is the shape you're considering, uh, as no exception is for the helium atlantis, so what you do here is discuss the oxygen, nitrogen, neon, and sulfur, and nitrogen abundance. Another thing you do is that we are not discussing, I not discuss the round case, but only the deep conversos by polar, and only in terms of the comparison between the two, that it's the mock, and the one that it's uh, the model abundance, and the ICF ones. And in addition, but Thinking about the round map and only the optical, this one, only the optical uh, operator for the spectrum, it's important to mention that not even the spherical symmetric case, not even in this case, the ICF should be recovered to and the model about. So, ICFs are should be revisited, also in the case of the round quantum memory. This is really what I uh, uh, want that uh, uh, Gloria, the guiding guide, <laughs> is doing with the uh, air collaborators and uh, they shall post a clear process. So, I know you don't see this in that much of detail, but the point here is that here I'm showing the transition structure for uh, a bipolar planet, one of those we model. And the important thing here is that for different parameters as you see here, is that if you take those uh, here is a function of the brightest radius to the network. If you take these guys or these lines that are like uh, the inner part, and uh, those are the transition structure, and these the equatorial direction in this one network. And those, those to the outer part, uh, the, along the polar direction. The important thing here is, is that if you take any of these cases, you compare those guys with those, we see that the uh, transition structure is different if you take uh, you know, different axes at the level. In these, so this is why it's really hard to, to derive a set of uh, equations that will take into account all these different directions. If, uh, you know, if you're considered polar and uh, no spectral lines. Uh, so just to understand what I'll show you now is we take the line intensities given by the so far 100 and 20 models a half. From this, you derive the helium abundance and the abundance total one, um, the ionic abundance of the various species, and from that, you derive the King, Kingsbury values of ICF. On the other hand, you use the mock I and mean the mocassin, you use the uh, ionic fractions coming from the water to return the two ICF. I mean, that, that would, if I, I take only the optical or optical plus UV, uh, that would recover the two abundance. <laughs> then what I do here, I show here, it's the ratio between the two things. So this ratio tells us we charge additional uh, corrections we need to consider in this scheme to account uh, properly to the different uh, morphologies. Uh, so, what you to see here is only to optical plus infrared and for a given luminosity, uh, the long guys are the polars and the square boxes are the ellipticals and here is the variation with the temperature of the set of stars. So we see that if the two metals give, give the same result, they all will be here around the one. So we see that under or overestimate the abundance using the DC scan for nitrogen. <coughs> then, if you go <coughs> to different luminosities, this change a little bit, but more or less the same trend. Altogether, we see that the main thing here is that for the bipolars, we do, I mean, we do underestimate too much the nitrogen, but much more than for the elliptical ones. So, <coughs> this is the case of the oxygen. We underestimate the total ones. Abundance, if you use the principle about this scan, uh, neon, under and overestimate, and the, the amount you see now in the moment, so forth, and then argon. So, altogether, what we have that uh, 
this this applies to the fine, the fine, the, the rate of these two things, they vary a lot with the temperature of the central star, as much as the shape. But they also vary with luminosity and chemical type. In general, the case of the bipolars are it's much worse than for the elliptical. And if you look here, there are different elements, and here is the amount, uh, you know, the uncertainty, I mean, whatever you have, if you use that scheme for these different cells. So we see that there are cases in which you are getting abundance that are 50% normal because of the, all these this little hair. And then if you add the UV, you have difference, but mainly the main thing is that, you know, here at the missing ions, in the case of the nitrogen, you can have this coverage, and here you have more. Anyway, this ion is very fast, so it's not that adding the UV can solve necessarily the problem, you know? The equations are not good even if, the, if you add the UV, not good enough. And this is the same trend for the oxygen. Neon uh, and the final conclusion is to account uh, for the different morphologies, the tools to derive uh, empirical abundance need to be and they are being improved. And do, these two tools are doing this kind of work. And the uh, thing, I mean, the lesson to keep in mind is that this discrepancy between the ICF and the two abundance varies with the temperature of the central star as much as its shape. And they also change the luminosity and chemical type. And this equation is worse for, for the bipolars as compared to the other Thanks for your attention. Okay, time for one quick question. Will the previous speaker get through? Well, Sorry, I got a bit dizzy with all the over and under and all the different ions. But the N to O ratio for type 1 was uh, from P0 bar nothing point eight. So these things are going to be changing now. This is a sort of indicator. So they'll also change the ratio of type 1s versus non type 1s. Yeah, it's true. Have you done on that or is it all in the paper? Or? Yeah, well, the point is that we do think that we need to explore all the parameter space so far. So it's hard to give you some equation that we turn in the next paper. So we're still dealing with this. The other thing is that, yeah, this is not the first work that is showing that the nitrogen uh, over oxygen abundance changes a lot for the type 1 type. I mean, there is another work in 98 by Bruno and Vegas, they are showing this. And, uh, you know, remember that I'm summing, I'm putting together, I'm mean, putting the entire planet level. If you do this, especially if it's special evolution, it's really much worse. And this is what uh, Monte was saying here today. So this is even if you take the you know this, you are very uh, the emission for the entire character memory, and this is the case when we derive I mean we say that type of one are you know nitrogen, uh, higher abundance of nitrogen than others. Uh, even if you are to you know integrate all the emission, you are doing it wrongly because of uh, you know, the set of equations you use for, you know, for if you are analyzing a bipolar case, for instance. Okay, thanks for that. It's, it's, it's a second result here. Move on to the previous speaker who had technical problems. Uh,